Hey traders, welcome to Sunday, April the 17th. And it is a start of a new trading week for us here. Let's touch on our weekly trading preview for this week that we're gonna be focusing on in our trading room. So a couple of things to keep in mind here as we are looking at the week and as it starts to unfold. Number one, we are technically, from a technical perspective, we are back into a full on bearish mode here. Uh, we've been bouncing around in a neutral area for the last couple of weeks, although the last couple of weeks have been in a down uh, sort of direction, but we are in full-blown uh, bearish mode right now, having broken through pretty much all of our technical indicator levels, broken through our support levels, broken through our moving averages. So we are in a sell mode right now in the marketplace. We haven't been in a full on sell mode for a while here. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out this week going forward. When we look at our technical levels here in the marketplace, uh, again, as you know, I try to trade from level to level rather than looking at directional biases in the marketplace. 43.85, 43.85 is the real critical level. For me, it's the real critical demarcation point, okay? That was the level of support that really needed to hold in the marketplace, and it wasn't able to hold. So we broke below 43.85, uh, and we've broken down through the 200-day moving average, which was 44.88. That was back on April 6th when we broke through that. We've now broken down through the 50-day moving average. So uh, everything that we're looking at right now looks very bullish. Now, the next level of support for me that I'm looking at in the E-minis would be 43.40. So we're not that far away from that right now. 43.40 would be the next level uh, of support that we're looking for. 44.45 uh, was resistance. And we couldn't, we, we attempted to last week break above that level, but we could not break above it and hold it. So again, 43.85, 43.85, it was the critical, critical level. It was uh, support and now it has become resistance. So again, we're looking at, at, at bearish stochastics all across the board here as we are setting up our trade. So again, my number, my critical number for me, 43.85, we would need to get above that, break back up above that to have some semblance of a chance for the bulls to take uh, charge again. 43.40 is my next level of support down here on the marketplace. Again, using the E-minis. Uh, looking again at the monthly sector rotation, we'll have an, a new update on this in about a week and a half here as we get to the end of the month, but it still is healthcare that shows the most valued area. And uh, communication services has been the area that I have found the most opportunities for shorting in. Let's continue to carry forward. We look at a week to week basis. This was two weeks ago where we were at from a heat map standpoint in the marketplace. This was last week's price action. Really the only thing that you can see that has changed substantively across the board is just a little more weakness than what we previously had. We already had a, a pretty mixed bag here going on and it's become a little bit more weak uh, across the board pretty much universally this last past past week. So again, we're seeing a lot of divergences in the marketplace. Uh, it was just an absolute, two weeks ago, it was absolutely just ugly week across the board uh, with the Russell just absolutely getting slaughtered. And this past week, you saw a little bit of a rebound there in the Russell, but everything else still pushing down. Of course, the NASDAQ getting hit really hard. The tech's very interest rate sensitive and it, bonds and interest rates are what are moving probably more than anything right now. They may be a little bit move, uh, over uh, pushed to uh, one level and one extreme and we might see a little bit of a rebound here. We're playing the TLT uh, inside of our AST program because of that, a little bit of a, a reversion to the mean type trade, but nevertheless, uh, tech's getting hit pretty hard with the interest rate moves that we've seen. The Russell being the most stable. We did do a uh, zero DTE trade on the Russell last week because of that stability. It worked out quite nicely for us. It was a nice trade. Uh, but weakness continues to abound in the marketplace. And uh, we do continue to see this divergence uh, between 
the uh, SPY and the Qs, and that's why we trade them both in, in the 4DTE approach. Uh, if we look at um, where the uh, open interest is in the overall market, you can see that we do have uh, quite an assemblance of a lot more activity on the put side than we do on the call side. There's still a decent amount of volume in calls, but the, the vast majority of all of the activity that we're seeing now is on the put side. And you can see that in addition to there being a lot more uh, focus on the puts than the calls, that it's also spread out quite evenly. We are just about a 50% retracement, Fibonacci retracement from the March highs of the marketplace. And that's pretty much reflected here in a fairly neutral dispersion of all of the different strike prices. So that, that, that means that we should have a fairly fluid movement of the marketplace, whether it's up or down. There's not a big call wall. There's not a big put wall that the market really needs to move through. Current uh, SPX levels 43.92 here. So we're just kind of right in this area right now. And uh, again, down here at about uh, 4,300 would be sort of a, a big demarcation point, I think, for the marketplace. So we'll see how that goes. I expected moves in the marketplace last week. It was about 76.70. Again, this is on the SPX that we're looking at. This week, finally, back in the game. Uh, we have been wanting to, we've been spoiled this year um, with uh, the correction starting in January and then all of the geopolitical news that's taken place. And we've been able to consistently see weeks in the high 80s or 90s. Uh, we've lost that for the last few weeks, but man, we are back this week with some great, great, great expected potential moves in the marketplace. That just means rich premium for us. So it means that we should have some really good opportunities this week for our zero DTE trading. Uh, if we look at the heat map, again, you can see that a couple of things. We look at the MACDs and the histograms. And that's in cell mode. We look at stochastics. That's been in a cell mode for a while here. Even the RSI is in a cell mode, although you can see that we are touching the bottom of the Bollinger Band. And there are some support levels down in this area here uh, that do provide some decent levels of potential support for the marketplace. Uh, so right in here. So we'll have to see how the week plays out here. Everything looks very bearish at this point. But we also have quite a few, I'd say four, maybe three, four levels of uh, varying supports that the market may be able to hit and find a level of consolidation at. But again, uh, we are in a sort of ugly period here. This is uh, what we call an M. M stands for murder. V, this is a V right here. V stands for victory. M stands for murder. Uh, it's a double top. We've got a double top that's formed here in the marketplace and it is looking to drop below this uh, right shoulder and it's moving that way right now. So everything that we are looking at right now from a setup standpoint does look fairly, fairly bearish. Uh, fear and greed sentiment reading. Again, we look at the price momentum in the marketplace, uh, stock strength, uh, the breadth of the market, put call ratio, junk bond demand, market volatility, we use the VIX to look at that and we call it safe haven demand, which is just the difference in returns between stocks versus treasuries. There has, is usually a, a pretty big de decoupling here, and that has not been the case as of yet. One of these two markets is going to be found out to be correct. Either what the bond market is telling us is going to be correct, it's inverting, we're going to go into a recession, or the stock market, which is still holding up fairly well, is going to be correct. But they are very on very, very divergent uh, paths right now, so we'll have to see where that ends up. Only one of them is going to be correct in that assumption. We look at the uh, fear and greed index from two weeks ago from w versus where we finished up last week. A little bit higher on the fear and greed scale here in terms of fear, but still fairly well balanced. As you know, and as we've talked about, the fear and greed index is a contrarian indicator when we get into extreme fear levels. That's usually a good time to buy, you know, a, a JP... Uh, uh, um, excuse me, Baron von Rothschild, Bar Baron von Rothschild, famous quote, you want to buy when blood runs in the streets, right? And of course, Warren Buffett saying, you want to buy when uh, every pe everybody is fearful, you want to sell when everybody is greedy. And so this is a contrarian indicator. 
Uh, we again, we're, we're, we're around the 42 level right here, somewhere in this area right here. It would need to start getting down into the 30s before we could really start looking at that as a, as a buy indicator to come in. But it's moving in that direction. Things that are on my watch list for this week, things that I'm looking at. Uh, this is a scan that I am looking to trade this week. Bearish stochastic alerts. These are stocks that have triggered a sell signal off of their stochastic. And uh, there's quite a few of them on this list, but these are my favorites that I'm looking at for this week for bearish trading setups. So if you're looking for some bearish trading setups, if you're looking for some ways to set up some delta negative type trades in your portfolio, these are the things that I'm looking at. You might want to take a look at those yourselves and research them as well. So that's what I'm looking at this week. That's what that's on my watch list uh, for this week. Monday, trading ideas. We don't really have a whole lot of potentially market moving news this week coming out. So not a lot of news coming out this week. Of course, Monday is always a very busy day for us. We've got our zero DTE index trade that will be kicking off uh, as we always do on Mondays. We've got to reinitiate our IWM weekly credit strangle trade, which has been great for us, as well as our four DTE trades on both the SPY and the Q. Uh, potential bonus trades that we're looking at for Monday is a potential enhancement to our Twitter trade that we initiated last week, just after Elon Musk had made his bid for the company. Uh, there's been some more developments over the weekend. Uh, there's been some developments on Friday as the market was closed with Twitter that uh, might give us the ability to possibly enhance that trade just a little bit more. We'll talk about that uh, pretty extensively on our Monday Zoom session. So that's what's on the agenda for Monday. Tuesday, we do have housing starts coming out one hour prior to the cash open. That might be a good kickoff for our scalping session. We'll see. Sometimes that moves the market around a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't. Depends on what the number is. But uh, our core trade ideas for Tuesday, uh, we have booked our profits on our pairs trade. So we need to come up with some new pairs trades. So we'll be looking for a couple of pairs trades on Tuesday. We also have Netflix uh, coming out with earnings and so we'll be looking at an earnings trade on Netflix and of course we will be in the Zoom session live scalping all day on Tuesday. Uh, also on Tuesday we're going to be looking at doing a 1DT, one, uh, doing an overnight one day trade on the index. We've had a lot of success with those uh, as of late and we will try to continue that string going into Tuesday's trading session. Wednesday's trading session, we do have crude oil inventory numbers coming out, existing home sales coming out. We've got some Fed speak going on all throughout the morning. And so we might have a little bit of activity here news-wise on Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday, of course, we are scheduled for another zero DTE index trade. And I am looking to initiate another weekly oil trade. We had an oil trade going on last week. I did end up making a little bit of money on that, but not nearly what we could have made. Uh, oil just really, really shot up for us on expiration date on Thursday last week. But we'll give it another go this week with oil. Oil always has good premiums in it. And so if we can hit them correctly, the, 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 the return on those trades are always really, really juicy. So we'll see what we, what we can find with the oil sector on Wednesday. Uh, potential bonus trades on Wednesday. Tesla coming out with earnings. So we're going to be looking at doing a Tesla earnings trade as well. Tesla is always one of my favorite earnings trades to trade. It really moves more around the sales numbers, which get reported a little bit before the earnings. And the earnings are usually sort of a kind of a big nothing burger with regards to the stock moving. But it is still a good implied volatility move uh, potential with what the earnings are with, with what the uh, IV is showing us. Good credit, good premium in those uh, options. And so we'll look to do a, a, an earnings trade on Tesla here on Wednesday as a bonus trade. Thursday, uh, we do have jobless claims coming out. We've got all of our softs reporting. We've got corn, wheat, and soybeans, and we do have nat gas reporting as well. So we've got a nat gas trade already working, but we may on Thursday potentially. This is just potential. I didn't think, I don't think I put it down as a potential trade here uh, for Thursday, but just depending on what we get with the corn, wheat, and soybeans numbers and any substantive uh, price action off of that, uh, we may look to, to do a bonus trade in that area 
as well. Powell and, and the e ECB's Lagarde is uh, speaking in the afternoon, and so we need to be aware of that obviously could be very potentially market moving news right uh thursday's core trades that we are looking at uh isrg has earnings coming out and then uh, again i i did put a, a 1 dte -T, 1 dte overnight index trade that we'll be looking to initiate on thursday as well for a friday expiration of course we will be spending all day on thursday inside the zoom feed scalping uh, last week, our two uh, our two Zoom days, our two scalping days. I think I, I think I brought in like twelve hundred dollars on Tuesday and about twenty six hundred dollars profit on Thursday. So it was a good week for us, uh, scalping wise. Um, so again, Thursday could be a very busy day for us as well. Friday, not any real big potential market moving news scheduled on the agenda right now. Of course, we will have another zero DTE index trade uh, plan for Friday. And I don't have any bonus trades scheduled right now for Friday, although we may get a, another type of a zero DTE in here on maybe uh, some, some, something different than an index, maybe a stock. You just have to see how the price action looks as the day progresses. So that's kind of what the agenda for the week looks like. Uh, in terms of uh, our results, oh, our overall results rather, uh, for all of our different programs, of course, uh, the big thing is our zero DTE. Uh, we, we have had 44 days now of zero DTE opportunities. We've done 73 total trades. Uh, of those 71 have been winners, two have been losers. Remember, if you are a part of our uh, live trading room, if you're a member of our group, remember to utilize that private video link that is in Discord's main channel, right at the top, the pin, if you hit the pin, every single one of our trading sessions is recorded and edited for you. Uh, and you can see the whole day's review uh, if you happen to miss the day and you wanted to see how we traded and what we traded and what the results of those trades were. Uh, in addition to obviously our zero DT, we have the four DTE SPY and Q trades that we've, that we've done since back in the end of uh, 2020. We've got 67 wins there, six losses going forward. Um, our IWM weekly credit strangle trades, uh, so far year to date, we've done 15 of those. Uh, and all 15 have been winners. Knock on wood, we continue that going forward. That's been an awesome trade for us. In fact, I'm going to do a, a little bit of an additional training video, I think, this week for you, specifically on the IWM credit strangle that we do. And uh, really what a powerful trade it is, what a powerful concept it is in terms of uh, what it could do to your bottom line uh, as a trader. Just that one trade alone. Uh, our pairs trades year to date, we've done 15, and again, knock on wood that it continues. Uh, all 15 of them have been winners. We have not had any losers yet on our pairs trades. Our bear market trades, this is going back now uh, about three and a half years in, in since inception. 69 uh, total trades. Uh, 65 have been winners. We've had three losers, and we do have one that is currently open and working for us. So we'll see how that one develops over the next five to 10 days, I would imagine. We should have a better idea. Um, one of the things that we just started, of course, uh, the CBOE is going to be starting trading zero DTE opportunities on Tuesdays and Thursdays now, which expands our ability to do zero DTEs for every day of the week. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to approach it a little bit differently. We're going to be using butterflies or potentially broken wing butterflies. Uh, but these are going to be low probability of success trades with very favorable risk reward ratios. So we've obviously only done one of these so far. We did a test run um, last uh, Thursday, I, I believe. And uh, it was a, a nice trade. Uh, we had it, it ended up being a winner for us. Uh, again, the, these numbers are not going to probably look very impressive over time. I would imagine that uh, our, our win rate on these going forward would be somewhere around maybe 35% win rate, maybe three, maybe four out of 10 at best. Um, that's by design, that's how they work uh, because they have such low risk in the trade. 
Uh, our average profit per contract was $45. Uh, I think we put in like $20 and uh, profit was $45 per contract and our average return was 280%. So I will just adjust this number, this average, the key number there being average. I'll adjust that as we get more trades under our belts here uh, going forward. Uh, and then of course our scalping program, uh, I'm going to report uh, what our previous week's result was for Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, there's the actual numbers. So Tuesday I brought in about $1,050 in profit and Thursday I brought in, uh, it was a great day, brought in about $2,600 in profit. Thursday was a good day. Uh, in spite of the fact that I started off the, in the hole by $600 uh, on the day because we had some execution problems with Tastyworks. So that, that was a little bit unfortunate. It's, it, it's uh, always tough when you're starting off in the hole by $600 in the morning and you got to dig yourself out. But it, it, it was still a good day. Could have been a really uh, um, amazing day, right? And then our asymmetric trading system, uh, that's our other system that we obviously have in place for more of an investing approach, passive approach. And uh, again, our 2021 returns was about a 55% return. We just about doubled. Actually, we did double. We doubled what the market made in 2021, and we did it at about 65% less risk. Uh, we measure risk through standard deviation, which is just a measure of volatility. Uh, we are through the first quarter of this year with the asymmetric trading system. And uh, once again, we, we're, we're ahead of the marketplace. And uh, I have no reason to believe uh, otherwise that we will once again this year beat the market and do it with less risk. So that program continues to be an amazing uh, performer for us. Um, bonus trading gifts for this week. Uh, I've pulled out chapter 12, The Subconscious Mind, out of the wonderful, wonderful book, Think and Grow Rich. And uh, I've given you that chapter link in the bonus trading channel. Uh, love for you to take a look at that and read that. It's a powerful tool for becoming a better trader. So hopefully you enjoy that this week. Links and support, of course, uh, I would love it if you would subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the notifications bell. Uh, I get questions every single week, usually just after I have put up a training video. Hey, what about this? And I'm like, well, clearly you saw it on the YouTube channel, right? No, they didn't. So if you click the notifications bell, you'll be notified when new trainings get put up on the channel. Uh, you can always reach me on Twitter through DM. That's an easy way to get a hold of me. Uh, if you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me, you can do it through this link right here, calendly.com forward slash theta seller. You can catch me on my personal email anytime. That always works. If you're looking uh, to do a two-week free, two free trial of the asymmetric portfolio management system, there's your link right there to use. If you want to have access to our live trading room, I'm going to do a quick review. Uh, this week, sometime, I don't know where it went. It's somewhere. Here we go. Uh, a quick review. This week, we're about a third the way through the year on our Zero DTE program. Uh, I have brought in about $10,000 so far this first third of the year on ND, NDX, NASDAQ, uh, zero DTEs, and about 44000 on SPX trades. About $54,000 of income coming in in these first three and a half months of the year uh, off of an average capital commitment of about $9,700. So this annualizes out at about $162,000 a year in income off of uh, ten, less than $10,000 of capital being traded. Now, you got to be careful when you annualize things. It's not going to be accurate, but I, I think it's pretty impressive what we've done in, in the Zero DT program. If you're interested in uh, a week free trial of our uh, Zero DT program, there's the link right there. Uh, obviously, we have a scalping program as well that we do on Tuesday and Thursdays. You can check that out also. Uh, and then the last thing that I just want to leave with you guys here on um, what is sort of a holy weekend or a holy week for a lot of people. We kind of have a trifecta going on this week where uh, we have uh, a Passover combining with Easter combining with uh, Ramadan. 
and that's pretty rare. And all three of those are uh, very important, very sacred, very reflective periods of times for various religions. I don't know if you're religious or not, but it's something that I have appreciated this weekend. It's something that I've thought about and, and meditated on a little bit. And uh, it just creates gratitude in my heart. And thanks for you guys. I appreciate all of you that are a part of our trading community and our program. And uh, I love hearing from your guys' successes and anything that I can do to help contribute to that. Um, I, I would I would be thrilled to be a part of that journey with you as well. So thank you guys. I appreciate you for being a, a part of the program. Of course, uh, we'll see you in uh, what? Uh, about eight hours, nine hours into uh, the trading room. And we'll be live in Zoom starting up another Another week, another day of zero DTEs. So have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.